Hi there, everybody. Welcome to our vodcast on immunity and the immune system. Now, what we're going to talk about today is how your body protects itself from organisms called pathogens. Pathogens are a group of organisms that can include viruses, which technically isn't an organism, bacteria, protists that can get into your body and cause disease and make you sick. And when being sick, that means your cells are being attacked, they're being destroyed, and this could lead to serious injury or death. So let's talk about how our body goes about preventing this from happening. Now, as we were saying before, these pathogens, they can do some serious damage in your body. So the first line of defense that we want to have is to make sure they don't get into our bodies themselves. What our body has is an outer covering that we call skin. And the skin acts as a physical barrier that keeps things out. The skin is kind of like a fortress wall around a castle. That fortress wall is going to keep any invaders out and they can't get into the castle and cause damage. And also, in addition to our skin, since we do have openings in our body like our nose, ears, and our mouths and stuff like that, we do have backup lines of defense other than our skin. So in your mouth you have saliva, in your eyes you have tears, and in your nose you have mucus and so forth. In your, in your ears you build up earwax to keep stuff out. And these fluids here, saliva, tears, and mucus, they actually have enzymes that, as we learn, can help be used to break things down. So these enzymes will help destroy the pathogens before they get into your body. However, we, as we know, our skin isn't solid rock. It's soft, it's malleable, and it can be broken. So when we break our skin by scraping it or cutting it or puncturing it, what we then have is a second line of defense, and it's a reaction called inflammation. Inflammation is where your white blood cells that are called macrophages move into the area that's been damaged to quickly start to engulf the pathogens that are entering. Because if they can cut them off at the pass, at the doorway, then they can't get into your body to reproduce and cause damage elsewhere. So when we have an inflammation, just like in this picture of this pimple here, what you notice is that you'll have some redness and some swelling. That redness is blood being fed to the area because that's where our macrophages flow from. The white blood cells move into the area through the blood and start destroying these pathogens. And on this pimple here, you have what's called a whitehead. And the whitehead is actually a pocket of dead macrophages and bacteria particles and so forth. Because in a pimple, basically a pimple is a bacterial infection under the skin where the opening in the skin gets clogged and nothing can escape. So you have that swelling occur in addition to the inflammation response. But sometimes the inflammation response isn't quite enough to stop a full-on infection from happening. And that's when we have our third line of defense. This is where we bring out the heavy artillery. And this is called our immune system. Now, our macrophages, as we said, they move around and engulf pathogens in a fashion something like this. As they move around and they find these pathogens, these bacteria and viruses, they'll stick out these pseudopods, these false feet, grab them and pull them in towards the cell. Once they get them in towards the cell, they'll pull them into the cell and lock them up with a lysosome, which then digests them, as we know, and as a result, breaks down the bacteria and kills it. When it breaks down the bacteria and kills it, it actually does a neat trick and it puts pieces of that bacteria on the outside, almost as if they were putting wanted posters on their body to let the body know that there's these bacteria that are in the body that need to be destroyed. So these macrophages are pretty important. So what they do is they'll signal to another group of white blood cells called helper T cells. And these helper T cells will signal to another group or different groups of white blood cells. The helper T cells are going to activate more macrophages to move into the area to eat more pathogens to stop the infection. Also, our B cells will be activated. This is another type of white blood cell which will make chemicals called antibodies that will attach to the pathogens or destroy them and prevent them from attaching to the cells. In addition to that, these B cells will also trigger the development of memory B cells, which are cells that will remember the pathogen that was in your body and will have antibodies ready for the next time to destroy it before you actually get sick. And we have our killer T cells. Our killer T cells are the cells that actually go around and kill your own cells that have been infected with virus particles or other types of materials. So they actually lock on and destroy that cell. Let's take a closer look as to how this all happens. Now, in your body, we have our capillary here and we have our macrophage just kind of flowing through, doing his thing. And surrounding this capillary, you have all these, these cells here. And let's just call them skin cells for now. 
okay? Your skin cells, although it looks like they're interlocked together to make this big sheet of skin on your body, they are not interlocked like Lego blocks. You actually have fluid in between your cells called interstitial fluids. Now this interstitial fluid is going to be where the immune response happens because this is how your pathogens are going to get in once they break through the barrier. We, under infection, what will happen is these pathogens will get in and start attacking cells or start secreting toxins. Viruses will get into your cells, reproduce and make more viruses and as a result they will leave the cell, bust open the cell and kill the cell. Bacteria will sit out here, they'll release toxins into the into this fluid here and those toxins will get into your cells and kill your cells that way too. So our macrophages are always on patrol. These, are, these guys are like the patrol cars that move through the neighborhoods. As these macrophages bump into these pathogens, they'll destroy them, eat them, and mark themselves with those proteins so it can trigger the response. So this is what happens in the first step. The macrophages move around, find the pathogens, and eat them. Now, this is what happens in the second step. As we said before, the macrophage eats the pathogen and puts the pieces of the pathogen on the outside. These pieces will then be used to communicate to our helper T cells. And our helper T cell is going to read that pathogen protein or substance and then dispatch the rest of the immune system out to the body to fight this infection. So one thing that happens is this. The helper T's will activate cells called the B cells as we said before. And these cells are made inside your bones. Now your B cells are going to do one of two things as we mentioned. One, they're going to produce what are called antibodies. And these antibodies are these Y-shaped proteins that float around to help destroy pathogens. And they'll make the B cells. And these memory B cells, as we said before, will remember this pathogen the next time it comes in and then be ready to make antibodies immediately to destroy it before you get sick. Now let's get back to the antibodies for a moment. Now our antibodies are really, really important because they can prevent viruses from attaching to your cells. Also, it marks them for destruction. Let's take a look and see what antibodies actually do. Now, here we have a video of blood flowing through a vessel. And in this vessel, we have red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma, and also virus particles. Now, if we take a look at our virus particles, they have special receptors on them that are used to dock and attach to your cells so they can get in, drop their, their DNA off, and then cause this cell to become a virus factory. So, antibodies, what they'll do is they will attach to those receptor sites, and as a result, this virus can no longer bond or bind to that receptor site. So as it floats off in the interstitial fluid, the macrophage floating on by will come by, eat it, and destroy it. And that's how antibodies are used to help protect our bodies against pathogens. In addition to the B cells activating antibodies and memory B cells, the helper T cells will activate more macrophages, so we have more cells going around eating more pathogens. And then, last but definitely not least, what also will be activated are your killer T cells. Your killer T cells are going to go around and destroy all of your infected cells to shut them down from being more pathogen factories like making viruses and so forth. And this is how they do that. Here's your infected cell that has virus particles in it. So this cell is making virus particles, forming viruses, doing exactly what the viral DNA wants it to do. Your killer T will attach to the surface of the cell and it'll dump these granules into the cell. When it dumps these granules into the cell, these granules cause the cell to self-destruct. And when it self-destructs, the cell will die and as a result, the viruses can no longer be made. It's shutting down the factories that are making the viruses so we have less viruses to fight and our infection or sickness is not as bad. And this is how your body fights off an infection. Now the most famous disease of our immune system is the HIV virus and AIDS. Now HIV stands for human immune virus and as we learned in our previous lessons on pathogens, viruses are very picky. So the HIV virus only attacks human cells and those human cells they attack are our immune cells. Now, HIV is an infectious disease, which means it can be transmitted from one person to another. By doing so, in order to get the HIV virus, there must be a, an exchange of body fluids. Now, tears and saliva have been found to not be a fluid that transmits HIV amongst people, but we're talking about the exchange of blood or unprotected sex and the exchange of body fluids in, the sexual ma in a sexual manner. So, those are how 
the HIV virus gets transmitted. Although it's infectious, if someone does have the HIV virus and they shake your hand, you're not going to catch the HIV virus. Or if they give you a hug, you will not contract the HIV virus because there's no body fluid contact in that manner. Now, what happens with HIV is this. Here we have a picture of this red cell, which is actually a white blood cell that's been colored so you can see it. And on the surface of this white blood cell, you see all these green dots there. And these green dots are HIV viruses. And they've attached to the surface to get in and drop off their DNA. Now, the specific cell in our immune system that the HIV virus attacks is the helper T. And this is an important cell because if you remember from our lesson, the helper T is what activates the entire immune response. So if we wipe out the helper T or the virus itself wipes out the helper T, that means the helper T cannot activate the B cells, which would make the antibodies that would attach to the viruses and mark them for destruction. It wouldn't be able to make the B cells, the memory B cells that would remember this virus when it comes back later to destroy it. Without the helper T cells, the macrophages or more macrophages wouldn't be activated. We would not have more macrophages eating virus particles. And specifically, since we're talking about a virus here, since they infect cells, we wouldn't have the killer T cells activated to move along and then destroy the infected cells that are making virus particles. When you wipe out this cell here, the helper T's, you cripple the immune response because the macrophages do not communicate with these cells. How does this lead to AIDS? Well, AIDS is not a brand new disease caused by a different virus. It is caused by the contraction of the HIV virus. AIDS, which stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, is simply diagnosed when your helper T cell count gets too low because the HIV virus has been destroying them. And someone could have HIV for 10 to 15 years before they contract AIDS or see any serious symptoms of AIDS. So because someone has AIDS, their immune system is so weak, they are no longer able to fight off basic infections that they could before. And that's how people die of AIDS. They don't necessarily die from AIDS itself, they die from the infections that their bodies can no longer handle. And that's how AIDS kills people. All right, so that wraps up our video on the immune system. Thank you for your time.